So when it, you, you come to actually collect a foliage sample from an individual tree, how do you want to approach that? I recommend getting a pair of these cheap uh, latex gloves. Uh, your hand, actually the perspiration from your hand will contaminate the sample, particularly with potassium. And so that'll help keep it clean. You want to have some clippers. You will need um, then a plastic bag, a regular Ziploc bag, <laughs> to collect the sample in. Um, and then the most important thing to start with is you want to identify the current year's foliage. And so we can see this is growth from 2010, growth from 2009, and growth from 2008. The best way to distinguish that is you can go from this year's bud that's being formed. As you go back, you'll see a bud scar from last year. You also see a distinct change in the color of the twig. For almost all of the purposes and the recommendations are based on current year's foliage. So uh, you would just want to collect this amount of the, the shoot. So we just come in with your clippers and we'd clip this foliage. What you want to do is then um, take a range of needles. Don't collect them all from the very tip or all from the base. Um, collect these and you can usually just pluck them off again taking care to avoid getting bark in there our goal here is just to have a, a sample that's representative of the uh, the needles on this shoot So depending on how many trees you're going to sample will probably depend on how many needles you collect from, from each one. So I might have a, a bag like this and then go on and collect from another 5 to 10, 10 trees will give you a sample. In the end, you want to have about 2 to 3 ounces worth of fresh material. At this point, you want to make sure to get a, yourself a Sharpie, label this bag, and then you want to put this... Uh, uh, best to store it in the refrigerator or in a cooler with ice blocks in there to keep it cold and you want to ship it right away. Uh, if these live tissues are left in the plastic bag at room temperature for a long time, they will uh, metabolize nutrients and you'll get, get uh, actual decomposition of the, the litter. You won't get good results from that. Okay, so once you've, you've collected your sample, ship it off, um, the lab will, will process that and then they will email or mail you the results from, from those tests. What the results are going to look like is it's going to give you concentrations of individual macronutrients in usually in percentage by mass. Then it will also give you concentrations from micronutrients in parts per million. Uh, many of the testing labs will also uh, provide information on nutrient ratios uh, as well as they for each of those nutrients they will give you some guidelines on whether you are in uh, optimal adequate or deficient ranges for each of the individual nutrients these are things that i would encourage you to interpret with some caution probably best to talk to uh, someone in the christmas tree uh, extension to get help in interpreting these, uh, these nutrient ratios and, and help in, in using those guidelines and in terms of modifying then your uh, fertilization regime.